guys, today we're going to go over deductive reasoning. So we're going to go over a couple of definitions first. A conditional statement is an if-then statement. It always starts with if and then then is in the middle. Um, we say it is a P then Q, which is what we represent as P and Q, um, in which P is the hypothesis and Q is the conclusion. Okay, so this is a really hard um, definition to understand. So if will always go with the hypothesis of some statement, okay? Let's say if we're saying the statement, if you study for a test, then you will pass, which we are all aware that is not necessarily true, but it's not saying it's a true statement. It's just saying it's an if-then statement. So if you study for a test, then you will pass. My if you study for a test is represented by a P. And then you would pass part is the conclusion. So if you study for a test as a hypothesis, then you will pass as the conclusion. And that we represent as a Q. And the, the P and Q is just a representation, so we don't have to write out a huge, long sentence every single time. So, you know, in geometry, we love using symbols. Um, Y'all have already learned lots of them. Um, so, this is just our conditional statement symbol. It's a P, and then the arrow is a then, so P, then, Q. Okay, and you will learn more what that is later whenever we get into it a lot more. It'll, it'll be more, it'll be easier to understand. Deductive reasoning that uses facts, rules, and definitions or properties to reach a conclusion. So all that's saying is that you have to use um, facts. You have to use like real things to prove something is true. You can't just say, uh, my sister's stupid. Okay, <laughs> no, you can't say that. Um, you can, however, say if she happens to score really low on an IQ test that she is unintelligent, but, um, you have to have proof of that. So it has to be a proof thing. You can't just be a mean brother or sister and say, my sister's stupid. That is not deductive reasoning. You have to have facts to back it up or rules or definition or properties. So that's what deductive reasoning is. Law of detachment is if P then Q is true and P is true, then Q is true. All right, I know this is confusing also, um, but remember we love to use symbols in geometry. So this is what it's saying. If P, then Q is true, and then P is true, then Q is also true. So whenever we're reading a sentence, I will highlight it, okay? And I'll try to use yellow and pink when I do it. Um, if it's a pattern, yellow, pink, yellow, pink, it's the law of detachment, okay? That's all it's saying is that if, it, if it's the same type of thing, yellow, pink, yellow, pink, then it's going to be true. So if P, then Q is true and P is true, then you can say that Q is true. So you can say... Um, If it's a weekend, then we don't have school. And you can say for P, today and today is Saturday. Well, then you your conclusion could be that we don't have school. So um, if it's a weekend is your P in this situation. We don't have school is the Q in this situation. So then if you say it's Saturday, which is a weekend, that's still your P then you can say the Q, that we don't have school today. That's kind of what that means. And we're going to be using sentences. This is going to be the part of math where it's all words. Uh, we won't do a whole lot of adding, subtracting, or anything like that. It's going to be a lot of manipulation of words. And because in geometry, we do logic. Um, and that's all that this, all unit two is, is logic. And it's all manipulation of words. Um, so we're using logic, using math type rules to manipulate words and sentences. 
So this is where math and English kind of collide, okay? Um, so bear with me because usually when you're in math, you don't have to write a lot, but you're going to write a lot. Okay, so the law of syllogism says if P then Q is true and Q and R, Q then R is true, then P then R is true. Now I know this is also confusing, so let me use some colors to kind of help. Um, so it says if P then Q is true and Q then R is true, then P then R is true. Um, let me think of a situation. Okay, so let me use the weekend and school example, but I'm going to throw another sentence in there. That's why we have three different letters this time. So P was if it's a weekend and Q is then there's no school. Then I'm going to add another one. If there's no school, then there's no practice. Let's say you're in a sport or band or whatever. So remember, the, the two original sentences are, if it's the weekend, then there's no school. If there's no school, then there's no practice. So then what you can assume is, if it's the weekend, there is no practice. You take the if there's no school out, because you can do that because they kind of chain together. So that's what the law of syllogism is. You're taking the middle part out. So as you can see, it went, pink, it went green, purple, purple, blue. So what I did is I pulled the purple out and just went straight from green to blue. So, um, and again, I will be highlighting these sentences to kind of help you see these um, and understand this, really. Okay, the law of detachment. So that's my yellow and pink. Use the law of detachment. Determine whether the, the conclusions are valid. So remember, everything has to be true for it to work. So we do have to make sure that everything's true. So it says two angles are supplementary to the same angle. That's our hypothesis. Are congruent. That's our conclusion. And then it says A and C are supplementary to B. Then it says A and C are supplementary to B. So let me just show you what that means. Is that the measure of angle A plus the measure of angle B is 180. And then the measure of angle C plus the measure of angle B is 180. That's all that this part here is saying. It's just a complicated way to say it. Um, so then it says A is congruent to C. So we need to decide if this is true. Now it is a law of detachment. You can see that it went yellow, pink, yellow, pink, which is what it's supposed to do. We have to make sure that it's all true, okay? Um, two angles are supplementary to the same angle. That's true because it's just a statement. And that they are congruent. So this is true. And then it says A and C are supplementary to B. So over here, we already wrote out math that proved that it's true. And we've actually proved... Never mind, I was thinking of something else. Um, so let me show you what this means. And I'm going to make up some fake angles to prove it to you, okay? So this, these are not stated anywhere. This is me just making stuff up, okay? So let's say that A is, um, let's say, 80. In order for it to be supplementary with B, B would have to be... 100, right? In order for it to add up to be 180. For the second one, we're using that same angle measure B, which means that C would have to be 80 also, which this right there shows you that they are congruent. So this is also true. The 
because both of these would have to be the same in order for the rest of this to work double time. Okay. If Helen is going to work, that's our hypothesis, our conclusion is then she is wearing pearls. Then it says, Helen is wearing pearls. And then it says, Helen is going to work. Here's the problem with this. Remember I said that for the law of detachment, it has to go yellow, pink, yellow, pink. This is not that. This is yellow, pink, pink, yellow. So this is invalid. using the law of detachment because it's out of order from what it should be, okay? You cannot assume that P is true if you already know that Q is true. In other words, in a real world situation, let's say this is a woman who always wears pearls to work. That's what she does, right? But maybe she just really likes pearls. So when she goes out on a date, she wears pearls also. So if it, if it starts that she's wearing pearls, you can't assume she's going to work. She could be going on a date also. So that's kind of um, a real world situation for that. All right, law of syllogism. Remember that one was green, purple, purple, blue, and then you would take the purples out and it would just be green to blue. So that's what we're gonna do for this one. So if a number is a whole number, then the number is an integer. Oops, that was supposed to be purple. If a number is an integer, then it is a rational number. So what we're gonna do is take this purple part out and just combine the green and blue. So if a number is a whole number, then it is a rational number. Next is, if Adam Scott's score is lower than the other golfers at the end of the tournament, oh, it's gonna be a long sentence, then he wins the tournament. If a golfer wins the master tournament, then he gets a green jacket. So we're gonna take the purple part out and just combine green and blue together. So if Adam Scott's score is lower than the other golfers, at the end of the tournament. Then he gets a green jacket. All righty, next page. Apply laws of deductive reasoning. Remember, we have to use laws that cannot be some made up something where your sister's stupid, like I said before. It has to be laws. It has to be facts. You can't just make stuff up. Um, so it says, determine which law is used and if a valid conclusion can be made. So it says, if a figure is a square, then all the sides are congruent. So if a figure is a square, then all sides are congruent. And then it says that ABCD is a square. So then you can say ABCD, or I guess all sides of ABCD. That would make more sense in this sentence.
are congruent. So this is pink. So remember, if it went in the same order, yellow, pink, yellow, pink, then it's the law of detachment. And it's okay to flip around words like I just did um, in order for a sentence to make sense. You don't want to make a sentence um, mathematically to where it's unreadable or doesn't make sense to people. You want to make sure that you, you still need to follow the same rules, but you can flip around within that sentence to make it make sense or even add a word or two to make it make sense. Ballet dance, dancers like classical music. If you like classical music, then you enjoy the opera. Okay, so it's ballet dancers like classical music. If you like classical music, then you like the opera. Um, so the first one wasn't necessarily written in an if-then sentence. But ballet dancers is the hypothesis, and that they like classical music is the conclusion. So it's still written as green, purple, purple, blue. So to make a conclusion on this one, you take the purple parts out, and you just write the green and the blue. So ballet dancers enjoy the opera. You, you can either write it as an if-then, or you can just write it that way. And remember if there's um, where you take the two middle parts out, that is the law of syllogisms. Okay, if a polygon is regular, then all its sides are congruent. All sides of polygon W, X, Y, Z are congruent. Okay, so... If a polygon is regular, then it is congruent. And this just says that a polygon is congruent. It doesn't give me that yellow part. Remember, for the law of detachment, it has to be yellow, pink, yellow, pink. Okay, so it can't be that way. Um, in order to use the law of syllogism, I would have to have another sentence here, which I don't. So this is actually invalid. And you can't assume P is true if Q is true. You can never say the conclusion before the hypothesis. You have to give the hypothesis first. And that's the end of your notes.